Hey guys, Andy from Barrington Motor Works here again. Um, just thought it'd be good to go through maybe what's our process for uh, disassembling, evaluating, and reassembling rockers. Uh, in this particular case for an R69S, so we have uh, needles and rollers, uh, whatever you want to call them, as opposed to the R50, R60, uh, which will have um, bushings, brass bushings um, on them. So I've disassembled this already. I've gone through and used um, my um, scouring pad and some WD-40 to clean off uh, old uh, pressed on gunk and uh, that's gone through every single component you can see an old one that I haven't done yet uh, here just you know dirty oil nothing too crazy um, so I wanted to walk through some of the ways that we will evaluate different aspects of the rocker uh, and either repair them or replace them um, so first thing is uh, I'll use the scouring pad to clean off um, so sorry I'll press off the um, top portion of the rocker um, so that then everything can come off from the top and I usually leave this the rod in the lower arm um, just so I have one less piece to keep track of but clean it all up um, and really what I'm looking for here uh, is my big thing is just a clean bore inside because oil is going to be coming in and around and getting into the uh, needles there um, so I'll usually use just kind of like a small metal brush um, to get in there. So I clean off the sleeve. This sleeve actually goes between the sets of, of needle bearings. So what I like to do after I clean that is install that on and just give it a wiggle, make sure there's not a ton of slop in there, just like you would any other kind of bushing, um, and, uh, and make sure that's clean. The next thing that I do is there are shim washers, um, similar to what you find on a uh, R50, R60, but on these there's uh, one for the top and one for the bottom. Um, so because a rocker will go on to the shaft and the primary movement is this, it's not you know all the way around, that kind of means that if you have a shim on there the majority of the of the wear is going to be in a couple places on it rather than throughout. Um, so what I like to do is just take you know, vernier caliper, you can use a, a micrometer if you wish to get a more sensitive reading. Um, it's really up to you. And then I'll just continually measure along the edges of it and see if there's any out around or, or um, uneven surfacing there. Uh, and I've measured these already and they're both good. So we're not going to have to replace those. Um, the next thing that I check are the needles. Um, so a lot of the time, um, what you'll find on these, if they are bad, uh, is moisture has gotten in there and caused them to pit. Um, so the visual inspection is, is looking for pitting or flat spots or cracking. Um, you can use, again, a, a, a vernier caliper or a micrometer and measure each individual one. That's another good way of doing it. Um, I'll also sometimes use a, a flat glass plate or, in our case, our, our big granite slab and roll them across on my fingers just to see if there, I can feel any flatness. Uh, you should have an equal number on either side, so 17 on the top, 17 on the bottom. Um, you don't want to have obviously any less or it'd be tough to get any more in there but you know anything's possible um, so I'm also checking where the wear mark is uh, for where the rocker touches the valve we don't want any notching in there or damage um, I also like to remove the adjusters and make sure that they thread into the rocker nicely um, sometimes as you uh, tighten these over time the threads can get a little buggered or if any you know junk go gets in there it can mess up the threads uh, so what I like to do is just remove it see how it feels when the threads are being turned out uh, if they're junky I'll usually um, chase the threads on both the um, adjuster bolt as well as use a tap on the rocker um, you know obviously if you end up in a situation where that doesn't change anything uh, you want to reevaluate and potentially replace uh, or do an even greater repair um, so this is going to be my left side intake I believe yep left side intake so our orientation is on the block there's a raised ridge and then on the other side is a flat ridge 
uh, the raised ridge is what you want sticking up, or excuse me, out towards you, with the hole pointing up, so gravity feeds oil down into there. Um, so start with a washer, goes on. I like to add, if you're not gonna be doing installing these right away, um, you know, we'll typically use a good amount of grease in there um, just to keep things from, you know, uh, getting any kind of moisture in or, or, or any rust or damage or anything like that. Um, if you know that you're going to immediately be installing those, um, you can use um, uh, engine oil. Um, that's probably the best lubricant you can use for because that's what's going to be running through the machine. Uh, in this case, because I'm not going to be doing um, them right away, I'm going to use a very little bit of grease. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to hopefully be installing them today, so I'm going to use some grease, but not a ton. I don't like using a ton of grease just because it can start to kind of clog up passages, um, and then when you do your running in check, all of a sudden you kind of have these weird globs of grease and oil mixed together, and it makes me nervous. Uh, so um, the next step is if you can, you want to start kind of laying these needles now. You may need to apply more grease if they don't want to stick. And then once they start to stick, you can kind of do it in an upward position. This is how I do just the lower set. It's not, I don't do both sets because then you just have needles running all over the place. Um, and that's not fun to keep track of. So I get these guys on, in theory. And then before I can drop any of them, so again, your orientation is like this, so you want your rocker to be oriented correctly. So your push rod's gonna be at the top. You're gonna slide your rocker down over there. Then you're going to grease up your pushing sleeve also. Slide that sucker on there. fine tip of something to push it down and then I throw a little bit more grease along the edge here and then for this situation I start installing our needles so when you start installing the needles on one side it starts to reduce the space on the other side of the circle so I try and do them kind of, I don't want to say haphazardly, but not in any particular order starting, you know, all the way around. You can, but what I find I end up doing regardless is I'll do some movements and that kind of evens everything out um, and centers all of our needles. Okay, so we've got those all in there. And our rocker is oriented correctly. So now what we're gonna do is go over to the shop press and uh, we'll press this piece down and we will put on our shim on the top and our next block uh, and then go from there. So now we're at the shop press, got my rocker and just some pieces to get it up to the height that I need. So at this point, uh, I'm just putting the rod portion of the rocker on the flat section, put on my shim, and just a, you know, any tube will do. This one just happens to be a good size. And then we're just gonna adjust so I don't have to move the rod, or the, uh, as much. So now we're going to start pushing this down and what I'm looking for is that for uh, the bolts that go through and connect the head to the cylinder, uh, they go through the rockers. So in each shaft there's a cutaway that the um, rocker uh, block has to 
um, align with so that you can get that um, bolt through. So what I like to do is, as I start going, I'll kind of use a flashlight and kind of visually see where, when I start to get in there and get that alignment going. It's not an exact science, um, but once it's close to there, what I like to do is take one of the bolts and see if I can thread it through. And if it goes through smooth, great. No need to adjust it. If it starts to hang up, um, then you want to move it one way or another. You may need to you know, do another disassembly and redo it. Um, so now we'll relieve the pressure. And now our job is to do the same thing, but with the top lock. We want to have that lined up with the cutaway in the shaft. So at this point I'm just trying to visually get it as close to the holes lined up and in line with that cutaway. that started. I'm going to use the same hollow tube and this is where it gets a little tricky because now I want to push this block down far enough so that I still have movement, freedom of movement here, but that I have as little slop up and down as possible. So what's more important to me now is freedom of movement because when I install the rocker I'm gonna have the ability to adjust you know micro uh, adjust the um, distance between the blocks so that I don't have any end float um, when the bike is running that's one of my top end adjustments so what I like to do here is really go slowly and I like to get as close as I can without going too far um, to it and, and sometimes you'll get you know a really smooth movement uh, of it, of the um, block down. Sometimes it's a little jerky motion, so you kind of have to be a, do a little bit at a, at a time on it. So I still have plenty of, of slop there and freedom of movement, and I can see a little bit of space, but it's not much. So I'm getting close to where I want to stop. I'll do one more, one more. Do I dare? Okay, we're gonna call it there. So now my next step is same as below. I'm gonna pass a bolt through. Cool, goes through. Relieve pressure, don't drop anything. And now what I like to do is I take both bolts and I thread it through both blocks and then I line a sight to see if the two bolts are aligned and that they are not. So what I can do, there's, you know, it's pretty easy to move them because the goal, there we go, is you want them aligned so when you go to install the rocker, one's not pointing this way and pointing that way and it makes it a tough installation if at all. Uh, even if it's just a little bit, you, it'll feel like you're really having to work hard to tighten down the bolts um, because they're not angled correctly. You know, if you bear through it, you know, potentially they can, you know, realign themselves. But I like to get as close as I can before I even start. Um, so this will be installed into the head on the left side uh, intake. So you always want to have your cup open or up and then your rocker is going to sit like that. So again, we still have freedom of movement. There's a little bit of end play. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install the adjustment bolt uh, back in there and, uh, and then we'll be good, move on to the next two.